So today I'm having a look at the amazing T Keyboard S3 Pro. So this is fantastic. All of these screens are individually programmable. They are buttons so we can click them to do different operations. Same with our little rotary encoder here that we can turn and press. It's fantastic. So when I got this, super excited at all the possibilities that we can do with it. But it did take me a while to get up and running with it and to get it working how I liked it to work. So I'm going to talk you through all the steps and the process to do it. And that way I can come back to my own video and see how the heck I got this thing working. So hopefully you will find it useful and hopefully you will do some amazing code with this little device yourself. Please do send a comment below if there is something you've been struggling with as well or if there's something you'd like to try. So this is the device. It can do many different things and you just program it how you'd like it to work. We're just going to run through the basic tutorial. So what we're going to do is start off with getting the files that we need to get this to run. So to start with, when you've purchased this, it will usually give you a link to the GitHub. If not, just do a search for the T-Keyboard-S3-Pro. And you'll end up on this GitHub website where you can then find the correct branch. So I am using Arduino. So I will click here for the branch and I'm choosing the Arduino. So this is our ESP32 for S3 that we're looking at. And from here, you can see the files, information, and so on. We're going to grab the whole zip, the whole thing. We want all of it. So we're going to click on download zip and then save this somewhere that you will remember. And then we'll come back to that in just a second. So in here, there are also tools and things like the icon viewer so we can make images for each of the screens so you can have your own different images they might be icons for things so we're going to grab that tool and that will be part of our zip package and then we um for me i'm using platform io so we will open this in platform io you can also open this stuff in arduino uh, but i'm going to use platform io in this example so once it is downloaded find where that is and we're going to click on our file and so mine's in downloads yours will be too and we're going to extract all of it Okay, so get that extracted and then navigate to where your folder is. So my folder is just here. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump back into our Visual Studio. So this is Visual Studio and I've already got Platform IO on here. If you don't have Platform IO, I do have another video that just describes getting up and running with Platform IO. So go to that one. If you have platform IO, what we're going to do is import an Arduino project. So with that, we're going to select a board. I usually start by typing Espressive, which is the company that makes the ESP32 boards. And then we're going to navigate down to the S3. I did choose S3 box for this one, and that one did work. Hi, my name is Christine. Thanks for choosing my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more wearable technology tutorials. And then navigate to where you want your um, directory to be. So first of all, we're going to go to our downloads and we're going to find our T keyboard programmer and open the folder first. And then you'll see, OK, we've got the files in the other folder. So just make sure you've kind of navigated through. With that done, click import. And then what will happen is it will just take a moment to set up your files and get your project set up for you. So I'll give you a minute to get that sorted. And in the meantime, you can have a look here. And I've got my files are here. So this is my folder where it's been installed and it's ready to go. And We've navigated into our examples folder. And I've just tried the first one, this GFX, the INO file, and that will launch our file. So this is the one that we do want to have uploaded onto our board. 
So one thing to note when you do get this board to program it, you need to put it into programmer mode. So at the moment, this is in work mode. So it's just showing me. So if I clicked upload, it will not find or upload to this board. So what we're going to do is put it in programming mode to start with. So we're going to unplug our board and with the board unplugged, we then press down and hold the rotary encoder. So press it down and with it pressed, we then plug it in. And then when it's plugged in, when we then let go, it will now become a device that is accessible. You'll see now none of the information is showing. It is in programmer mode and that file is now being uploaded to our screens. So we will wait for that to be uploaded. And the good thing about downloading this as a project, they've already included all the library files for you. So this is a really great way to get up and running with the system. So now it's at 100%, which means the files are on here. As you can see, it's still in programmer mode. So what we're going to do now is just give the reset button a press, and then that will launch it back into the mode where it's working as a keyboard device, and it will launch the sequence. So for example, now if we click the first one, um, so let's do control C, V or enter. And if we put our cursor onto the screen and we can use this now as a keyboard. Fantastic. So that's just getting it up and running and getting it to work with the files. So sometimes it can be a little tricky, but following this method, I have managed to get it working every time straight up with no issues. Sometimes if we look at trying to um, download files, there are then missing library files and it can be a bit more of a challenge to get working. So that is just putting the tutorial files on to get you up and running. The next step will be planning exactly what you want to use this board for. So I'm going to use it for a whole bunch of things, uh, but I'm going to make another video to show you where I'm going to put, for example, AI prompts that you might want to use and things like code snippets that you use very often. So we'll get that changed up in our next video. My name's Christine. Thanks for choosing this video. Please like and subscribe if you want more wearable content programming with Arduino and ESP32 content.